to my channel. Now, in the next few tutorials, you may notice a slight difference. Now, in this period of uncertainty, I don't have access to my normal recording or baking equipment because I'm also changing location. But don't worry, I've come up with a few back to basic recipes which involves no fancy equipment or ingredients. So I hope you enjoy these recipes. I hope you try them out and most importantly, stay safe. So lemon cake is one of my favorite flavor cakes. It's so strong in flavor, yet so easy to make. To start, as always, I'm going to ensure my tin is lined properly. Now I have a loaf tin here because lemon cake is traditionally in a loaf shape, but you can use any shape you like. And one of my tricks to lining tins is to actually use the wrapper of the butter that I've used to rub inside the tin just so you don't have to dirty up any kitchen towel or use extra oil because that wrapper is covered in butter anyway. And this is what's gonna help the parchment paper stick to the tin. So I'm going to get a large piece of parchment and rest the tin over the top of it and then fold the paper where it meets the tin because when I take the tin off, I can see the outline of the tin and then I'm going to cut inwards towards the corners and this will help the paper slot into the tin more accurately when I come to line the tin. So you can see when I place it on and then push the paper inwards where I've cut kind of fold into one another to prevent creases. And I'm just going to make the paper nice and flat and there is a little excess paper in the corner so I'm just going to trim this off. I think it's really important to line your tins properly because at the end of the day you don't want your cake sticking to your tins. And I'll leave that to the side until I'm ready to use it. So as always with cakes I'm going to start off with some melted butter and into the butter goes the sugar and I'm going to add the vanilla extract here as well and mix that in until a thick paste has formed. Now because I'm limited to my kitchen equipment, I much prefer melting the butter rather than creaming it because only a mixer really creams the butter well enough. And this method ensures that the sugar mixes in properly. So obviously as it's lemon cake, we need to add some lemon zest. Now I know this looks a bit green, but it is lemon, I promise. And that can go straight in and mix through. And the smell of lemon fills the room and you can just tell how strong the flavor is gonna be in the cake. So I've beaten up my eggs and they can go straight in, as well as the milk. So all the wet ingredients at the same time and mix that through. And I'm using a whisk here just to break up the eggs more and mix it into the rest of the ingredients easier. A spatula doesn't really do that, which is why I'm using the whisk. So now I'm going to add the self-raising flour straight into the mix. And now I'm gonna use a spatula to mix this because I don't wanna be incorporating any air at this point. I just wanna fold the flour through and I'm going to keep folding until a smooth mixture has formed. So now it's time to add the mixture to the tin and as you can see it's so easy to pour in and that's because of the melted butter from the beginning. So all it needs is a little tap to make it even and I've preheated the oven at 175 degrees Celsius and this cooks for about 30 to 40 minutes. I'll give you a range because every oven is different. So check after 30 minutes and it may need an extra five to 10 minutes until it's cooked all the way through. So I'm going to crystallize some lemon zest. Now this is totally optional, but if you haven't done it before and you want to try something new, then I highly advise it because it's actually really easy. To start, I'm going to peel the zest off a lemon and you want as large a chunks of peel as possible because it will make the next bit a little bit easier and quicker. And what I'm gonna do here is just trim off the very edges of the peel to make them a neat rectangle. This is a really minor detail, but if you wanna keep things neat and tidy, I highly recommend it. I'm then going to slice off each end of the zest to make the rectangle even more neat. And now I'm going to cut them into thin strips. So you can use a zester for this, but I find that the zesters actually curl up the lemon zest a bit too much, so I actually prefer cutting this by hand. And then you should have quite a few strands of lemon zest. Some were a little thick, so I'm just gonna cut them in half to make them as even as possible. So now we're going to blanch them. So I've got a pan of cold water here, and I'm just going to add the zest to the water. And what I'm going to do is heat up the water until it's boiling and then strain it. And this is gonna strain out the bitterness from the peel. So I went and put it on the heat and heated the water until it was boiling and now I'm going to strain it through and repeat the process. So you can see all that water is where the bitterness from the peel is in there. So you just wanna discard that water. You don't need to keep it for anything. 
So once again, peel goes into the pan along with some cold water and onto the heat until it boils and then once again, strain it. And you wanna do this three times. Now this also works with orange peel, but because orange peel isn't as bitter as lemon is, you only need to do this part a couple of times. So you can play around and experiment. So now we're going to crystallize the peel. So I've got some sugar here, which I'm gonna put straight into the pan along with some water. I'm just gonna use my finger to make sure the sugar's not stuck to the bottom of the pan. And then the lemon zest could go straight in. And you will also notice that the lemon zest has softened slightly too. And put it on to heat. And I'm going to wait for the water and sugar to boil and the sugar dissolves into the water. And now I'm going to leave it boiling until the lemon peel starts to become a little translucent. And once the peel is translucent, that's the point in which the peel has been crystallized. Now this liquid I actually want to save because it's full of the lemon flavor. So I'm going to soak the lemon cake once it's out the oven in this sugar syrup because it will add to the lemon flavor of the cake. So I'm straining the peel over a jar so I can keep the liquid. So here I've got a paper towel and I'm just going to spread out the strands and leave them to dry until I'm ready to decorate the cake. So the cake is cooked, it's lovely golden brown color and when I stuck a knife in the center, it comes out clean. Now with that sugar syrup that I kept before, now's the time to soak the cake. I find soaking a cake when it just comes out the oven allows the syrup to absorb more. I know I don't usually do this when I'm decorating a cake, but because it's a loaf cake, I don't mind the top being sticky. And then wait for it to completely cool before I turn it out onto what I'm serving it on. And I like leaving this lemon cake in the tin to cool because I feel like it's a little bit too fragile to handle while it's still warm. But once it's cold, I've out turned it onto a board and now we can decorate it. So here I've got some icing sugar and some lemon juice, which I'm going to pour in. And this isn't really about quantity here. So I haven't written the recipe for this. It's more about achieving the desired consistency. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of lemon juice and see how that absorbs into the sugar. And you want a kind of runny mix because I'm going to be drizzling it over the lemon, hence the name lemon drizzle cake. So it appears to be a little bit thick, so I'm gonna go in with a splash more of the juice. So you can also do this just with water, but the lemon juice gives it an extra zing. And all I wanna do here is bring out the lemony flavor. So once you have quite a nice runny consistency, you can start going over the cake. And I'm just gonna let it trail off my spoon and go from side to side along the loaf. Now, some people like this icing a little bit thicker or thinner. It's totally up to you on this bit, but I think it looks really pretty. And it's also going to act as a glue for the lemon zest that I made earlier. So I'm just going to place the lemon zest all over the top of the cake onto that wet icing. And there you have it. That is how easy a lemon cake is. So I'm just going to cut it open because I'm desperate to try a slice of this. And you can see how moist the cake is from absorbing all of that sugar syrup. And I can tell you now the smell of this is just mouth watering. It does keep for a few days, but obviously with cake, the fresher, the better. So I recommend making this in the morning and then serving it for tea. So I hope you enjoyed this video. A lot of you recommended this one, so please try it out. As usual, if you do, please tag me at George's Cakes. I love seeing you creating these recipes, especially from this Back to Basics series. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it, and don't forget to write any suggestions that you may have for other tutorials, because more are coming in the next few days. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.